All right, guys, so this video is on, uh, again, slope intercept form, but we're kind of continuing on and getting into some more advanced versions of slope intercept form. So this is 4.2D you should be looking at, okay? So what I want you to do is go to the top right of your page and make sure you have the date. Today's date should be right here. I'm just gonna write date because depending on when you're watching this, it could be a different date. So please write today's date on it, please. Very good. Okay, so now what we want to do is write an equation of each line. In so if we're talking about a slope-intercept form of a line, that slope-intercept form right here is y equals mx plus b. And that should be pretty comfortable for a lot of us. We know that the m is the slope and the b is the y-intercept. So what we want to do is we just want to kind of recognize that this here, uh, the y-intercept is the b, okay? And this here, the slope is the m. So we just want to write an equation with y equals mx plus b. So if I look at that, I know my m is negative 3, and my b is 1 half. So that's how we write the equation of a line in slope-intercept form that looks like that. Next, we go on to 1b, right? And as we look there, it says write the equation of a, of a line with a slope of 0 and a y-intercept of negative 2. Something gets a little bit weird here. Well, let's just try what we know. We know it's y equals mx plus b, right? We also know that the m is 0, and we know that the b is uh, negative 2. So I'm going to go ahead and put in everything I know. Now, I personally don't really like having a plus negative 2 here, so I'm going to erase the plus negative 2, and I'm going to change it to just a minus 2. Now, 0x is really just 0, yes. I said, um, y, y equals negative Good. So what we're trying to understand is that when we have 0x, we have really nothing there, so y equals negative 2 is a better way of writing this uh, line. Does that make sense? So that's what we're looking for. Um, so hopefully 1a and b weren't that bad. Let's talk about writing an equation of a line if we have a graph. Well, they gave us two points. Hopefully we could find our m and our b from it. So m we've been color coding in blue. m is this. Does anybody know what the m would be from this, from this graph? What would the m be? Jump in. Yes. 3 over 2, or 3, yeah, rise, 3, run, 2. Okay, so let's check it out. I'm going to use red. I'm going to start on the left. Here are the, the steps, if you like. Start on the left. That's step 1. Go up, which is positive, or down, which is negative. So I'm going to start on the left. I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4, <coughs> 5, 6. I went up 6 in this case. So my rise is 6. So my rise over my run is going to be 6 over, and now let's do our run, and let's do our run in black, okay? So our run is now step 3, go to the right until you hit the other point, until, until you hit a second point, right? So now we're going to go right until we hit a second point. One, two, three, four here. So my run is four. So my slope is six over four, and we can simplify that to what? Three over two. Because six divided by two is three, and four divided by two is two. And this is the most correct answer. Six over four, although technically correct, is not simplified. So it's not a um, full credit answer when you give uh, 6 over 4. You want to say 3 over 2. Why don't you pause the video and try to write the slope-intercept form of 2b. Try this problem right here, okay? Let me show you which one I'm talking about. This guy. So pause the video and give that a shot. So hopefully you had enough time to check that out, and I'm going to give the answer to that problem, okay? Uh, it is y equals negative 3 over 4x plus 2. Why? Because that's the plus 2 right there. And the slope is the blue part right here, this. And it's because we went down 1, 2, 3, and then over 4. Sorry, I overshot it a little bit. 1, 2, 3, 4. 
So down 3 over 4 is negative 3 over 4. Every time I say over, I mean the way we're reading a book. So we're going to go to the right side. Does that make sense? Okay, good. So let's keep on going, and let's try to write an equation here with points. It's the same thing. We're writing an equation over and over, but now we're writing it with points. Do we know what the m is from these points? Do we know what the b is? That's what we need to have. We need the m, and we definitely, without a doubt, need the b. So how could we possibly find the m, and how could we possibly find the b? Well, I like to find the m by change in y over change in x. Can't do rise over run. I don't have a graph, right? So I'm going to do change in y, which is delta y. That's what they call that, over delta x, change in y. Well, the y's, if I go to this y to this y, and I arrow it like this, I've changed by going up 6. My change in y was 6. What was my change in x? Well, I had to start on the right side, because I started over here this time. So I had to start over here again and change in x. How does 0 get to negative 3? Did we go up 3 or down 3? We went down 3. So this is actually a slope of 6 over negative 3, which is actually simplifies to negative 2. That's my slope. Now I've got to talk about what the y-intercept is, the b. And it's actually hidden in this problem. If there's an equation, or if there's a point at 0, comma negative 1, what does that mean? They're kind, of, they're kind of telling you that if we go to 0, comma negative 1, we're right here. That's this point right here. 0 negative 1. So what do you think the b is? Negative 1. Negative 1. So they've actually hid the b inside of that point, so your b is negative 1. And now, if you look at number 1, you see the number 1 on your paper up top? Now you just do exactly what you did there. You just do y equals mx plus b. So remember, we were right here and we did it already. We did this. This. All we need now is to do exactly what we did there. y equals blank x plus blank. y equals blank x plus blank. Well, it's going to be mx plus b. And what did I say about that plus negative 1? I don't, it's not wrong, but I don't love it, right? So I'm going to change the plus negative 1 to what? To just minus 1. Thank you, sir. That's good. And that is your answer for number 3a. Oh, 3b is a little sneaky, so I'm not going to make you pause there. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you what I think. Something weird's going on there. So the change in y is how much? Yeah. The change in y is 0. So the m, the slope, is 0, is what you're saying, right? So it's got to be y equals 0x, right? y equals 0x. Right. So I have y equals 0x, but I also have to do the plus b, right? What do we say the y-intercept is, though? I think there actually is a y-intercept here. What do you think it is, Amelia? Exactly. It's the negative 5. If you were to plot this at 0, negative 5, it'd be right here. 0, comma, negative 5. So the negative 5 is the y-intercept, and we don't like to have plus, minus, right? We're just going to change it to minus 5. Minus 5. This is what we got. Can we simplify further? What's 0x? I got 0 cars. What do I got? Zero. 0. I've got nothing, right? I've got 0 iPhones. What do I got? Nothing. I got nothing. I've got y equals negative 5 for an answer on this guy. Okay? So that's where we're at here. So we're moving on to 4. Uh, hopefully it's going smooth. And now we're talking about some stuff that's getting really complicated. It's getting into hydroelectric power, like how does slope and linear equations actually make sense in the real world? Love this question, but it's not going to be the easiest one. So I'm going to read it for you. Excluding hydropower, so outside of hydropower, U.S. power plants generated 105 million megawatt hours of renewable electricity in 2007. By 2012, the electricity generated had increased to 219 million megawatt hours. This is, these are actual data points, too. They don't give you fake data. Um, write a linear model. I guess a linear model to me is just they want you to do probably y equals mx plus b. That represents the number of hours of megawatts generated by a non-hydropower renewable energy sources as a function of the number of years since 2007. Whew. 
How's that sound to you? I think what we need to do is we need to figure out what's going on. Like how much change in X has there been? What is X going to be? Is that going to be the energy or is that going to be the time? What makes more sense for that? Well, megawatt hours is definitely going to be your um, change in Y, your Y value. So I want megawatt hours to be represented by Y. So I'm going to use this for as a Y value. And I'm going to also use this as a Y value. So I now have a Y value. And I also want to know the years since 2007. So in the year 2007, how many years has it been since 2007? Yes? Yeah, to 2012. How many years is that? So I'm going to scratch this out, and I'm going to say y is equal to, uh, oh, sorry, I'm going to say x is equal to 5. Do you guys get what I'm saying? Like, I'm saying that, like, it's been 5 years. So I'm just going to use x is equal to 5. And I want to know how many years has it been since 2007 in 2007? Zero years, right? None. So I'm going to use x is equal to 0 here. Do I have enough? to figure this thing out now. So when x is 0, y is 105, should we graph it? Should we try to do some algebra? Should we just try to think real hard? What do you want to do? What's your strategy? What's your strategy? Aside from crying. OK, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to plot them. I think that's the best way to do this. Let's pull a graph here. Okay, so we've got a graph that looks kind of like this. We said that we had over here, we had like 100, right? And then we know that, actually, I'm going to slide that down. I just can't get it today, I guess, huh? Okay, so let's make this 100. If that's 100, this is 50, this is 25, this is 75, right? Um, I guess I would say this is 150, and this is probably 200. And this is probably, I don't know, let's see, 225 or so. So we're kind of getting there. We're kind of getting to what we need. What was the other data point that we needed? Was it 230 or something like that? Or 2, 220, 219. That's what it was. Okay, so 219. So 125, 275, and this is 225. Okay. So what I need to do is I need to plot some things. Okay, this is zero years. This is one year, two, three, four, and this is five years later. After zero years, we had used 105 megawatts, or we were generating that. Do we agree with that? Does that make sense? OK, now it was five years later, and how much have we been using or generating? 219, was it? So I'm going to go over to 5 here. I'm going to go up to 219, which is somewhere around here. You see what I'm trying to say? I'm trying to say it's like here-ish, right? And I'm going to plot this point as well. And I'm going to ask you now if we have enough. This is what's going to change your life, okay? Right now it's going to be great because look what we have. We have a line. And we just need y equals mx plus b for that. y equals mx plus b. Well, what are we going to use? y equals what's the rise and what's the run? Well, I think Kyle had said the rise, the change in y was what? 114. So it's 114 is the rise divided by 5, right? So that's our slope. Yep, and you can leave it if you want. Plus our y-intercept. Where did we start? What's our y-intercept? Isn't this our y-intercept? Isn't this just our y-intercept? Which is 100 and 105, 110, what was it? Help me out, people. 105. So plus 105, and that is the equation of that line. We are out of time, so we're going to have to stop the video there. Thank you for your time. If you could pause and try part B and predict what's going to happen in 2017, that would be great. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.